Okay, hello, welcome back to another of our podcasts. Um, today we are going to go over moment of inertia and torque. Okay, so let's start in the past with force equals mass times acceleration. Okay, that should look familiar. Um, all throughout this unit, we've been going through and saying, um, we've been, you know, uh, drawing connections from old quantities to new quantities. Basically, for every linear quantity, there was a rotational counterpart. Um, the rotational equivalent of force is torque. All right? Uh, force is um, what causes changes in linear motion, and torque is what causes changes in rotational motion. <clears throat> acceleration, the counterpart of acceleration in rotational motion, is angular acceleration. Right? Acceleration is the rate of change of velocity. Angular acceleration is the rate of change of angular velocity. Okay? So we're left with this awkward little gap here. What goes here? Who knows? Um, in order to answer that, let's try and define mass first. Mass, if you'll remember, is basically a measure of inertia. Mass is how difficult, let's see if I can write this out, how difficult it is to write on a tablet. No, how difficult it is to change linear motion. Mass is how difficult it is to change linear motion. Okay, so think of it like a big old 18-wheeler. It's got a lot of mass. Very, very difficult to start it moving. Very, very difficult to stop it moving because it has so much mass. Okay, difficult to change its motion. All right? Um, this other thing, this rotational equivalent to mass, let's define it before we know what it is. That seems like the best idea. It's going to be how difficult it is to change rotational motion. Okay? How difficult it is to change rotational motion. How difficult it is to start something rotating or to stop something rotating. All right, and the word for this e rotational equivalent of mass is moment of inertia. Wait, no. I a the editors were sh will surely get this. No. <laughs> okay, moment of inertia is the rotational equivalent to mass. It's how difficult it is to change rotational motion. How difficult to start something rotating or to stop something rotating, okay? And it is re written with, oh, what happened here? Uh, capital I. Or if that bugs you, because everything else, ooh, PC performer popping up again. <laughs> everything else in rotational motion has been Greek letters. If this bugs you, just pretend it's capital iota. <laughs> okay, so moment of inertia, written Greek letter I. Um, let's see. What determines moment of inertia? There are actually three things that go into moment of inertia. The first is just raw mass. Okay? If you have two things exactly the same shape, right? Exactly the same pivot point, but different mass, the one with more mass will be more difficult to rotate. So you can think of it like a, a wooden bar versus an iron bar. The iron one's going to be more difficult to rotate simply because it has more mass. Okay? So that's the first thing that determines moment of inertia. The second thing is R. Okay? R, that same R from your torque equation. Uh, so, sorry, not force. Let's try again. Torque. Torque equals force times lever arm times sine theta. This R right here is the same as this R down here, the lever arm, okay? How far you are from the axis of rotation. So if this is my axis of rotation, I've got something, let's say, let's just use a bar for all of these. Oop, I can draw it nicely. 
Okay, I've got a bar rotating around the axis of rotation, like this. <clears throat> the farther out I get, okay, the bigger that R, the farther out I get, the more moment of inertia I have, the larger my moment of inertia. Okay? Then the last thing is shape. Okay? Shape determines moment of inertia. So if I had, let's say, a sphere with mass m, radius r, okay, same mass, same radius, versus a disk, like a little coin or something. I'm trying to draw it 3D here. Pretty good. Disk, same mass, same radius. Because they're different shapes, they will have different moments of inertia. Okay? So, mass, lever arm, shape, all go into moment of inertia. Now, for this class, you're only going to be responsible for one moment of inertia. The moment of inertia of something called a point mass. Point mass. Okay? A point mass is... Basically, we've been using them all year. We've just never called them that. It's an approximation. Uh, it's basically we're pretending all the mass is concentrated at one single point. So back when we were doing those problems where we were whirling rocks around on strings, okay, like that, perfect drawing. Um, we were pretending that these rocks were point masses, where all their mass was concentrated boop, right there, right in the middle. Okay. So the moment of inertia of a point mass is simply m r squared. The object's mass, all concentrated at the middle, mass times the distance from the pivot point, the lever arm, squared. <clears throat> okay, and that's the moment of inertia of a point mass. Units, mass is measured in kilograms, radius is measured in meters, so we square those meters. Units of moment of inertia are kilogram meters squared. Okay, uh, it's a scalar quantity, just like normal mass. Okay, it's a scalar quantity. So if I've got a bunch of, this is my pivot point. If I've got a bunch of point masses, point mass here and point mass here, and you get a point mass and you get a point mass. Everybody gets a point mass. Okay, if I've got a bunch of point masses, to find the total moment of inertia, all I would have to do is add all these together. If I had I1, I2, I3. I4. All I would have to do is just add them together. I total be I1 plus I2. I'm running out of room. Plus dot dot dot. There we go. Ellipses solve everything. Okay. So, everybody good on point mass? I think so. I think so. All right. <clears throat> this moment of inertia gives us a really, really cool, brand shiny new formula. For those of you who noticed right at the beginning. Torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Just like force equals mass times acceleration, it's the same type of formula. So let me get a new slide that's getting crowded. So torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. Oh, one thing I forgot. Moment of inertia, scalar, just like normal mass. Okay, There's no such thing as moment of inertia to the left or moment of inertia to the right. It's just moment of inertia. That's why I can add them all together like that. So torque equals moment of inertia times angular acceleration. It still equals our old thing. So we can set those two equal to each other, and this lets us do some really cool stuff. Was it not? There we go. Ah, it's not going. There we go. Oh, I think I was writing it too shallow of an oh, angle. Okay. okay, so we have these two formulas for torque now. Let's put them to use. Let's do a little practice problem with this. Let's say I've got a pulley. Um, and we'll, we'll approximate it as a disc. So again, let me try and do my 3D drawings here. Oh, that's terrible. That's OK. OK, pulley. Now the moment of inertia of a disc is 1 half mr squared. And again, you won't need to know this. If you ever need a moment of inertia, 
besides the one for point mass. You are responsible for that one. If you ever need a moment of inertia, it will be given to you. Okay. Uh, also, if you need it for your homework, page 285, I believe, has a big table of moments of inertia. So if you need it for your homework, look there. Okay. The moment of, of inertia for a disk is 1 half mr squared. Let's say we've got a force. A force pulling straight down on this disk. Um, what magnitude force should we do? Um, 75. 75 newtons. Okay. What radius should our pulley be? Two? Okay. Two meters? We'll Two have meters. a big pulley. And then what mass? Um, the big pulley should have a big mass. How about 100? Okay. Just a flat 100 kilograms. Okay, so we have a 2 meter radius pulley weighing 100 kilograms, a force of 75 newtons pulling straight down on the edge. Okay, what I want to know is this. What is my angular acceleration? Okay, so what I'm going to do is first I'm going to find the torque using our old formula. Alright, I'm going to find the torque using our old formula. Torque equals force, 75 newtons times lever arm, it's acting right at the edge of this pulley, so 2 meters, times sine of the angle between them. Okay, so sine 90 is 1, 2 times 75 should give me should be 150. 150, right? 150 newton meters. Now, this same torque equals I alpha, all right? So this same torque, 150, equals I, the moment of inertia. Now for a disk, it's 1 half mr squared. So let me go ahead and plug that in. 1 half, the total mass is 100. The radius is 2, but I need to square that, times alpha. Okay, so I've got 150, uh, let's see, divided by 200, I think. Right? Uh, yes. Yep. Yeah, 150 over 200, which is numbers. One five zero, two hundred zeros cancel. Uh, Fifteen over two is seven point five divided by ten, point seven five newton meters. Or oh, wait, no. What am I doing? 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 It's it's late. It's very late. Uh, it's not torque. We're solving for angular acceleration. So same math, okay. just not newton meters. Point seven five radians per second. Squared. So, always double check your work. Yes, and think about it. <laughs> yes, always know what you're doing. Okay. Great. I think that pretty much takes care of everything. Okay. Sounds good. Mm -hmm. um, read your book if you have any more questions. The book is always a good resource. It is. Okay. Well, good luck. Yep. Bye. Bye.